So the problem we're going to look at next is how to rotate the box that represents the player. If this is if this is the player box right here, if you'll remember from the game, when the camera rotated around the player, th that was fine. You could move in any direction, but the box itself didn't rotate. We're going to look at how to rotate that box. In the last video, we came up with two basis vectors that we could use to com that we could combine these two vectors and and make any other point in the in the entire 3D space. And then actually we have three vectors, but I'm reducing this to two dimensions. It's the same in three dimensions, but just so it's easier to teach and understand, I'm going to show you in two dimensions. We'll go back to three dimensions later. So if I want to get this point right here on the top right corner, that's one U plus one R, right? One U plus one R. If I want to get this guy on the top left, that's one U and then plus negative one R plus negative one R. If I want to get this guy down here, that's negative one U. We're going down, we're going the opposite direction of U, so negative one U plus one R. And then this guy down here obviously is negative one U plus negative one R. So what's really great about basis vectors is that if you pick a different pair of basis vectors, let's, let's pick a pair of basis vectors that have been rotated like this, 45 degrees to the left. So here's our new U and here's our new R. Okay, all I've done is I've rotated them 45 degrees to the left. Now let, let's see what that does to these points. Let's take one U again, so we go this way, and add it to one R. Here's our new point. One U, one R. Now let's take one U and subtract one R. Here we are right here. One U minus one R. Now let's take negative one U and add one R. There we are negative one u plus one r and then lastly negative one u and negative one r there we are negative one u negative one r so when I join these four points together you can see that taking my base vectors and rotating them by 45 degrees also rotated my shape that I had originally by 45 degrees as well. And you can see that you can see that this 1u 1r translated to this 1u 1r. This negative 1u negative 1r became this one over here. This one became that one there and this one became So all my points are the same relative to each other but picking the different basis vectors picking rotated basis vectors rotated my matrix. And in fact, I can go a step further here in green. I can say this 1u plus 1r, I'm going to just represent this as a vector, 1 and 1. This means 1u and 1r. Here I'm going to say 1, negative 1, or 1u and negative 1r. Here I'm going to say negative 1, negative 1. And here is negative 1, 1. So you can think of these basics, this basis vector as taking these four coordinates okay, and rotating them. We rotated all four of these coordinates using this basis vector. And there is actually a mathematical structure that will do this all magically for us and it is called a matrix. Okay, now I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying. Oh no, matrices? I hate matrices. They made me do it in high school. I had to multiply them, I had to find determinants. They suck. Well, let me take a moment and convince you that matrices are awesome. Because when we're making games, we actually don't have to multiply or find any determinants of any matrices. The computer will do that for us. All we have to know is how to make matrices do all the amazing things that we want them to do. And I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to switch back to 3D. Um, if you take, let's say I have a, a forward vector, a, a uh, up vector, and a right vector, just like we had in the previous video. 
Okay, these are our three basis vectors. They're all orthogonal to each other. And they can be any basis. You can choose weird values just like this. If you put each one as a column in one of your matrix, so this is fx, fy, fz, I'm just taking each basis vector and making it a column. Ugh, well, I can't think and, and write at the same time. So rx, ry, rz. So I've taken each basis vector and made it a column in my matrix. And now when I multiply that matrix times some point, some point, where'd my green go? x, y, z. Then I'm going to get a new point, a new vector that has been modulated, that this process has been done to that point. So this matrix right here, this yellow matrix, modifies these green points and turns them into these blue points over here. I will have a new, I will have a new vector with x prime, y prime, and z prime where it has been modified by my basis vectors that I have chosen. So all I need to do is pick the right basis vectors and I'll get any transformation that I want in 3D space. So we're going to go to the code now and see how that works. All right, this is going to be the shortest code section yet. This is the part of the code where we, um, where we render the player and we set the color of the player, and then we set the position of the player right here, and then in this big block we have all of the math that's required to make our basis vectors for what direction the player should face. I'm not going to go over this because we did exactly this in two or three previous videos, and uh, why not? Here's some links to that. So let's go right to making the matrix that's required. All we're going to do is, here's, here's my matrix, matrix 4x4, four four. this is, I'm calling it M player, and let's just pass it those basis vectors that we just made, back up, back right, there we go, and now send it into our graphics library, and when I call this render box function, that creates a bunch of vertices and, and renders them, but first it will transform those vertices by this matrix that I'm passing in. So that's it. That's all we have to do. Let's run it. Beautiful. It works. The box always faces forward. It always faces where the camera faces. So beautiful. Um, I'd like to take this moment to remind you guys again that you can find the source code for this on GitHub. The link is in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, you can always leave a question or comment below or you can ask me on my Twitter account. So I'm really excited to do this next few videos because we're going to be going over all the really cool things that you can do with matrices. You can do a lot of really neat things with them. So I'll see you guys there.